This project is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturing company in China in field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They provide completed PCB assembly service with worldwide free shipping and ISO 9001 quality control system. Also, on their site there is an online Gerber viewer where you can upload your Gerber and drill files to render your board. So, if you want to make a PCB for your electronic project, PCBWay is a great choice for you. Visit their website and www.pcbway.com for more services. Hello! An ion thruster, also known as ion engine, is a type of propulsion system that generates thrust by accelerating ions to high speeds and expelling them out of the back to the engine. Uh, the basic principle behind an ion thruster is to use an electric field to ionize and accelerate a propellant to produce a small but continuous thrust. Ion thrusters are used in space spacecraft propulsion systems where they high specific impulse and low fuel consumption make them ideal for long duration missions. They have been used in space since the 1960s and have been steadily improved over the years. Deal time, this time I will present you a very simple way to make an effective ion thruster. I got the idea from the plasma channel where several such devices are described in the previous period. I tried to construct as simple as possible such a device that does not require precise 3D printed parts so that it can be made by less experienced makers. From the material we need an ordinary 2.5 mm copper wire used in house installation. Next a small, met small metal plate, in my case aluminum and a high voltage source. We make one electrode from the wire and it should have approximately this shape. The dimensions are not critical and it's only important that this part has the shape of a circle. For, uh, the other electrode is made from thin sheet metal uh, as described later in the video. For the high voltage source, I'm currently using a plasma speaker board that I bought earlier for testing purposes and for this project it turned out to be great because the output voltage can be changed simply with these trimmer potentiometers. Always any source of high voltage greater than 15 kV can be used. You can also build your own high voltage source described in one of my earlier videos. Now let's first test one stage of the motor and roughly measure its characteristics. Uh, to measure the air flow I will use this small anemometer but I'm not sure that the values it shows are correct because the anemometer reacts to the electromagnetic field created by the ion thruster. For those reasons I will also use an empirical way to measure flow using uh, candles Uh, and a thin light paper. Uh, during the testing I will also measure the total consumption uh, in relation to the thrust created because this characteristic is very important in the cases where this engine is used i.e. spaceships. Uh, one electrode is, electrode is static and glued to the, glued to the base while the other can be moved to achieve the ideal distance. To increase the thrust I will now use three stages, actually three identical units placed in the same line. The electrodes are connected by a parallel connection. This way of placing the motor is situable in the case where the greater absolute thrust is needed on a small surface, for example when turning in a certain direction. 
While for constant movement in one direction, the stages should be placed in, a, in the same plane one near one. Uh, now I will do a short test. You can immediately visually see that the thrust is, in this case is significantly higher and the consumption is almost the same. As the power increases, the thrust increases proportionally. Let's see how the paper moves with a doubled power, power of about 30 watts. Distance is about 60 centimeters. If we reduce or completely turn off the lighting, an incredible beautiful visual effect is obtained. A trapezoid formed uh, by plasma can be seen between the electrodes.
And finally one note, namely after longer tests I found that the results for the straight of the truss read on the on this small anemometer differ even, even by several times at the same truss on the engine. As I mentioned earlier, the electromagnetic fields created by the engine has a huge impact on this anemometer, so if I get a more robust anemometer in the future, I will update the data. Therefore, the, uh, we will ignore these values and the best indicator of thrust straight is the flame and thin paper methods. In the following you can see a detailed description of how this device is made. 